Hello, my name is Josue Diaz. I am a licensed architect in the state of California, and this is Archie Corner. In this episode, we're going to be talking about elevator lobbies, more specifically, whether an elevator lobby has to be rated or not. So if you want to find out more, don't go anywhere. You're about to find out. Let's start by simply talking about the reason why hoistway protection is needed to begin with. In a building that has a hoistway or other vertical penetrations like stair shafts, protection is needed for smoke in the event of a fire. Smoke can travel easily to upper floors if the elevator hoistway is not protected. This is what is often referred to as the smoke stack effect. As you will learn in this video, one of the ways to control smoke is by creating lobbies outside of the elevators. These lobbies prevent smoke from entering floors above. And the question today is whether or not these hoistway openings need to be protected. And if so, do they need to be protected with a fire rated elevator lobby? Well, to find out, let's dig into the IBC code sections that talk about the requirements for elevators. Per the 2021 IBC, that will be chapter 30, Elevators and Conveying Systems. And to narrow that even more, we will be discussing IBC section 3006 titled Elevator Lobbies and Hoistway Opening Protection. Now that we know what section in the IBC we are referencing, we can just go through the requirements. Let's start with the first section, 3006.1. This section notes the requirements for elevator hoistway openings and enclosed elevator lobbies. Section 3006.1 provides five scenarios that need to be addressed. First, when a hoistway opening protection is required by section 3006.2. Second, where an enclosed elevator lobby is required for underground buildings. Third, where an area of refuge is required and an enclosed elevator lobby is provided to serve as an area of refuge. Fourth, where a fire service access elevator is provided. And finally, fifth, where occupant evacuation elevators are provided. Let's start by addressing item number one. To address this scenario, first, we need to answer the question, when does section 3006.2 require a hoistway opening to be protected? This is important because if the hoistway opening needs to be protected, then it needs to be protected per section 3006.3, and you guessed it, one of the ways of protecting the hoistway is by providing a rated elevator lobby. In essence, Section 3006.2 states that elevator hoistway door openings must be protected in accordance with Section 3006.3 whenever one of the four following scenarios are present. First, if an elevator hoistway connects more than three stories. Second, if the building is not protected throughout with an automatic sprinkler system. Third, when the building contains any of the following occupancies, I1, condition 2, I2, or I3 occupancies. Fourth, if the building is a high rise and the elevator hoistway is more than 75 feet in height. There are some exceptions, and I am not going to go over all of them in detail, but here they are. First, if the hoistway is an open parking garage. Second, Protection is not needed at the level of exit discharge if the level of discharge is protected with sprinklers. And third, if elevator hoistway opens directly to the exterior. But let's say you don't meet any of these exceptions and you need to protect the hoistway opening. How can you do that? As mentioned before, protection has to be provided per section 3006.3. This section provides four options to protect the elevator hoistway opening. Option number one, if the building is not sprinklered, the elevator hoistway needs to be protected with an elevator lobby, and the lobby has to be enclosed and built with fire partitions, per IBC section 708. Option number two, if the building is sprinklered, the elevator hoistway needs to be protected with an elevator lobby, and the lobby must be enclosed and may be built with smoke partitions, per IBC section 710. For both options, any opening and penetration also has to be rated. Option number three, an elevator lobby would not be needed, but an additional door would need to be provided at each elevator hoistway opening. One way this can be achieved is by using a smoke curtain. The way the curtain works is that upon detection of fire, 
A flap opens, the curtain drops, and the hoistway doors behind it are sealed. Firefighters can still use the elevators since there is a button that can be pressed on these curtains to open the curtain and allow passage. This method is convenient in existing buildings where placing a lobby may not be possible. Option number four, an elevator lobby would not be needed if the elevator hoist weight is pressurized per 909.21. This is an oversimplification of the process, but this basically means that the shaftway is provided with more air so that air can only go out of the hoistway and not into it and thereby preventing smoke from entering the hoistway. When people want to know if a hoistway opening needs to be protected, these are the four most common scenarios. But there are still four other scenarios that may not be so common that we still need to discuss that are related to this item. Before we get to that part, I wanted to mention that if you would like to support me, you can do so through Patreon or just simply buy me a coffee so I can stay up and be able to make these videos. Information to both of those accounts are noted on the description of the video below. Also, if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you think that others would like these videos, please feel free to share. And to those who are already supporting me, I wanted to give you a big thanks. All your support really helps. But for now, let's get back to the video. Item number two. Stated that if an elevator lobby is required for underground buildings, then it has to meet section 405.4.3. As with all codes, you should check out section 405.4.3 and also read 405.4 and 405.4.1. Now, you might be under the impression that compartmentation only applies to buildings that have a floor level more than 60 feet below the finished floor or the lowest level of exit discharge. However, I am not going to get into the details of this because it may get too complicated, but have in mind that even if an underground building did not have a floor level more than 60 feet below the finished floor level or lowest level of exit discharge, you might still need compartmentation because section 405.5 and 909 would require smoke control anyway. Therefore, if you need an elevator lobby because you have multiple compartments, then section 405.4.3 applies and basically states that you need an enclosed elevator lobby and it must be built with smoke barriers, complying with IBC section 709. These lobbies would also have to be provided all the way up to the highest level of exit discharge. And of course, there are requirements for the door assemblies too. Now, moving on to item number three. This too is straightforward. If you have an elevator lobby and you are required to provide an area of refuge in the lobby, then the elevator lobby shall comply with section 1009.6. In part, section 1009.6.4 notes that the area of refuge, which in this case is the elevator lobby, must be built using smoke barriers, per section 709, or have a horizontal exit, which by the way, if you don't know what a horizontal exit is, you guessed it, our key corner has a video for that too, so you can check it out. Item number four states that an elevator lobby must comply with section 3007.6 if fire service access elevators are provided. And yes, there is also a short Archie Corner video that talks about fire service access elevators, so you can go check that out as well. If you have a fire service elevator, then section 3007.6.2 notes that the fire service access elevator lobby shall be enclosed with a smoke barrier having a fire resistance rating of not less than one hour. Item number five states that if you have occupant evacuation elevators, then you need to comply with section 3008. This is not very common, but as you can see, elevators can be used for egress if they comply with section 3008. And similar to the last section, section 3008.6.2 in part states that the occupant evacuation elevator lobby shall be enclosed with a smoke barrier having a fire resistance rating of not less than one hour. So there you go. Now you know the basics of what the IBC requires for elevator hoistways and if they need to be protected with an elevator lobby or not. And if they need an elevator lobby, whether they need to be fire rated or smoke rated. And that's it folks. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to like it and subscribe if you haven't done so already. 
Here's a couple of other videos I hope you like and I hope that you find that interesting. But for now, this is Archie Corner signing out.